one. This is the podcast that's discussed. I'm the host, Michael Haspin. I heard there's a new joint with Yanzi and Nemesis. So just first go into that track and who you sampled. Tell me about who you sampled in that. If you want to, you know, some people don't like to disclose that, but if you're cool with it, you know, talk about it. And also speak on how you met them. Yeah, so the sample, like, right in the beginning where it's, like, dudes, like, roasting somebody on the side of the street. Uh, it's this dude called Pompano Randy. You follow him on Instagram. He's, like, a comedian, you know what I'm saying? Like, Kodak Black is a fan of him. And, you know, he's a Haitian dude, so he's, like, real funny. And basically, I don't know, it just, like, popped in my head. Like, dang, I could put that right in the beginning and it sound cool, put some effects on it. And then, yeah, me and them go back... I think like 2014, 2015 time around. Uh, like grew up like around the same area in Broward, like Fort Lauderdale area, Pompano. I don't really know like exactly where he like stayed for the most part, but like Deerfield area. And like, you know, we went to like similar high schools. Like he went to like a high school like over here, this side of town. I went to like this high school over here. So it was a little different, like, but we were kind of exposed to the same people. Like, you know, Rojas, right, from the whole... XXX. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I grew up with Rojas. Me and Rojas uh, lived in the same neighborhood, went to the same school and shit, and kind of, like, grew apart because he ended up going to that school that Nam went to. So they ended up, you know, kind of, like, linking up at that school and shit. So, but Nam was, like, like... Like OG, man. I look at I look up to him like a mentor type of deal. Like he, he really put me on to like you know making beats and shit, and like taught me how to sample. Taught me like you know, you know them them guys whole like sound and vibe like on 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 block. So like he knows exactly what to tell you, what not to tell you, and like how like I don't know. Like he just kind of basically put me on to making music and just like what I should be doing and how I should be doing the shit. So, so definitely got like shout out to them. And that's why like, I want to put him like right on the first track of the project. Cause I already put out a project, but it was just me. I didn't have no features on it. And then with new Broward with this project, I want to make sure like every track had a feature either like whether I'm on it or not, you know, like I made all the beats, but I made sure that it was like a compilation album of like, People from Miami, people from Broward, but that's what I was trying to do. So it's called Broward, the album. No, it's called New Broward, like New Bro- Bro- oh. Bro- Broward, yeah. Because basically, you know, Broward gets tied into Miami a lot, <clears throat> and there's a, I, th- I think, a big difference between like what's going on in Miami and what's going on in Broward. Like, if you if you type in music studios in Broward, you're gonna get like. Man, like over 40 results there's like so many music studios in Broward and not all of them are just like hip-hop and shit you know like, like a lot of rock studios reggae studios you know a lot of different sounds and like if you really put your ear to the streets like you start finding artists that like like insanely talented like lyrical like lyric wise they're not just like making you know trap music Kodak Black XXX you know whatever you know, they're really going in, like, trying to be artists and shit. And that's kind of, like, what I'm on. Like, like anytime I make a beat, I try to be, like, man, I want to be, like, the Kanye West of Briar County. You know, that's, like, the type of shit I'm on right now. It's, like, I'm trying to connect with, like, the right artists that, like, like, we not just making hits, you know, to make hits. We trying to make, like, songs that, like, kind of, like, really resonate with people and can, like, have a lasting effect going forward. You feel me? Yeah. So, what artists that came out of Broward County that you don't know are you a fan of? That I don't know? And yeah, and then we'll go into who you know from there, besides them and shit. No, there's a lot. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of artists from Broward that I don't really know. Like, I know Kodak has a bunch of little artists that he works with, but I don't know. Like, I don't really, like, pay attention too much because... It's weird because, like, I rap and I sing and shit, but I also produce and, like, engineer a little bit. So, I don't know. It's I guess it's different for everybody. Like, I don't like to listen to too much shit because then, like, I start trying to, like, sound like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's so weird. It's like I get too influenced by it. Like if I listen to Migos, all of a sudden my shit started to sound like Migos, you know, like or like even you, like I remember like you did the reaction for Yantra 2020. It sounded like some Travis shit. And I was listening to a lot of Travis when I made that, you know, so it, I got to be careful what I listen to sometimes because it'll really like, you know, get stuck in there. And then by accident, I'll produce something and like, I don't want to like sound like I'm trying to bite people's shit, you know. Yeah, and it wasn't the fact that there was a beat switch like that. that it made me remind me of Travis. I mean, I might have said that in reaction, but it's more so just the sense that you used and shit. Mm, no, yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, definitely. That whole song was, I mean, I wouldn't say the whole song is inspired by Travis, but definitely, like, those, when I made those beats, I was still listening to, like, a lot of Astro World and just the production, because I'm a big fan of Mike Dean. So it's funny that you say the synths sound like Travis. I fuck with Mike Dean. Yeah, yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike Dean is fire. He does a lot of cutty shit. You know, I've sampled him. Stuff. He's fun. He's fun to, like, yeah. Like he has a lot of good uh solo work that people sleep on. Um, I don't know the name of any of that shit. I just like looked up Mike Dean solo synth music, and it's all ambient. It's all chill. Like uh, and he and and a lot of the like big mainstream songs, you know, he contributes one way or another to them. Like he'll engineer a lot of vocals for like, like just most artists. Like he does a lot of engineering, and he'll do them on Twitch too. Like, half the songs motherfuckers listen to on the charts are, like, engineered or mixed by him. Like, he doesn't just make beats. Like, he's all around. Uh, that, uh, and he does live, like, engineering. Like, when, he when like, Travis performs and shit, he's there at the control fucking table. Nah, like, yeah, and he gets the guitar the out, too. Live. Yeah. Yeah, man, when you take it to that next level, that's, you know, and that's the kind of, like, you know, same shit I'm, I'm on. Like, I don't care if I got to, you know drive a forklift on 40 i could still make music you know and, and you know he i forgot what kind of genre he started off doing i think he was doing rock and roll before no like some but he also was shows, like yeah. hello with the like southern rap like he was hella tapped that's in what it was. he was hella that's tapped was. in with the ghetto boys that's what it was like yeah. he was like engineering for them and, and pro- i don't know if he was producer or not but he Houston. But, yeah, he was in Houston. He was Houston. like, he was out there. He was doing shit. Yeah, and that's another thing. There's so much music, you know, to listen to. It's hard to, you know, listen to everything and take everything in. Like, it's just so much shit. I haven't even listened to Kendrick's new shit yet. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I did once, and I was like, All right, I don't really give a fuck anyways. Like, I don't really like Kendrick mm-hmm. that much. Like, like, he has a lot of good exactly. old shit. I just like... Yeah. Like, 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 he has good old shit, but, like... I don't understand how, like, there's so many people who have, like, released more music that are really smaller than him that have just surpassed him, in my opinion. But if you say it in a sentence to, like, Joey Hip Hop or some fucking loser hip hop YouTuber or, like, Twitter page, then they'll just be like, oh, yeah, your opinion's invalid if you don't agree with the common opinion that Kendrick Lamar is the greatest hip hopper. Like, I don't really give a fuck. Like, I listen to, like, fucking. I, I listen to Nemesis more than I listen to, like, Kendrick. Mm. Like, I listen to, like, MC Holocaust more than Kendrick. And honestly, if you want to talk about commentary in hip-hop that talks about the, what Jaden Smith would say, political and economic state of the world, MC Holocaust has made way, has made music that touches on that more than Kendrick, in my opinion. But nobody really gives a fuck, because first off, his name is stupid as shit, and it's just mainly made just to, you know, make it so he's not mainstream. And second off, uh, people prefer, like, you know, underground artists, they prefer their outlandish, like, crazy shit, but not they, when they see an underground artist trying to make, like, introspective, uh, you know, lyric-filled stuff, they're just like, oh, like, you know, I, I don't know, it, it, that's just a opinion that I have, but, like, like in terms of this dark underground shit for MC Holocaust, like, or the Doom Shop shit, people like the crazy intense shit, but sometimes motherfuckers try to make a politically charged, like, uh, like song, and I think people should, like, except both but you know people only look for like political music and uh mainstream music in my opinion in my opinion uh when it comes to underground uh music and up and coming acts it's more uh they're more focused on uh, on the gimmick that the person is doing until they become big and it's almost as if 
you have to be a big mainstream star in order to talk about political uh, content and and stuff like that because then your opinion matters because you have an, a big but but I'm I'm saying uh, fuck that all th- people with fan bases and sizes of all sizes should you know make political content if if they want I don't know you feel me it it depends yeah I, I guess it, it really depends yeah what your sound is and like it'd be hard for like let's say juice world to make political content right because his shit was like very emotional and about his personal you know shit it, it, and like a lot of his like singles and like songs that were like party drug songs like those hit but i feel like the ones that really hit were the ones that were more emotional and like whatever same thing for like cuddy you feel me so i were like i don't know like post malone or like jack harlow it'd be hard for them to make some for them to make some political shit but it really depends that's why i I think that's why maybe that's why kendrick gets so much praise is because he can take it to that top tier political level and really he can yeah like like run with it you know but at the same time like sometimes i just want to listen to some shit that's like not you know like i don't know just like yeah, I'm not bumping Kendrick like, on the way to work. I'm not. Exactly. I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not. I'm playing, like, Cursed, or I'm playing, like, I'm playing some, like, Gesefelstein EDM shit, like, some hype shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or but, but another thing with that shit is, you know, if, if a, uh, it's almost as if political conversation and the, um, counterculture movement has been commodified into something that, uh, you know, is uh something you have to do so like the little baby thing he makes one fucking song about black lives matter and then all of a sudden you know he never he's he goes into an interview and he's like yeah i'm never making a song about any political content ever again i only did that once and i'm only ever going to do that once and it's like that's like a that's that's in my opinion that's unacceptable like and, and, and you know he can do whatever the fuck he wants but like it's just like, you know, we, I know what you were doing. Now I see that. I'm like, oh, I know what you're doing. You're commodifying a political movement into a record. Like, it's sad. The same thing with Kodak Black when he was like, you know, really like heavily supporting Trump. And when he dropped Tunnel Vision, you know, that was like really like eye opening. It was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he did it, you know. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like really really inspired by Cuddy, so you know Cuddy doesn't really try to bring in outside political stuff into his music. So for me, music was always like an escape, you know. So, now his music's for your soul. Yeah, it's for like it's, your it's, heart. Yeah, exactly. That's what you know. I learned from him. And like one of the first songs I made was really praising him for showing me how to use my voice because it's hard to like sometimes for when like when you're trying to like learn how to sing or use your voice and shit if you got like a monotone like deep voice like i do it's really hard to like really hear yourself and like think that it's ever gonna sound good so when i started hearing like cuddy and drake and like mac miller with that nasally voice that he had it 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 inspired me a lot but definitely with cuddy he, he tries to keep it in the realm of this like dream world you know, I'm going to take you to this place where, you know, all the ideas you ever wanted are going to come to you. And for what, for Ralph Williams too, you know, Kanye, you know, I think those three for me are really like, when you talk about creativity and just making shit, it, you know that like, there's just this space where you could just pull shit and, you know, like never really take credit for making it. Cause sometimes I'll make stuff and then the next day, I'll run through it and listen to it. I'm like, how the fuck? You know, like, like you can't believe that you made that shit sometimes. Like, not to say that it sounds so good, but you just don't even know where those ideas came from. It's not like, oh, I'm going to make the drums this way and I'm going to sing this way. It just, you know, I, I like to go with the flow as much as possible. So it's hard for me to like try to bring in like political shit and not disturb that flow you know what i'm saying no yeah when i was like starting with the music shit 
I was like, yeah, bro, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to only talk about this type of stuff, bro. Bro, yeah, yeah. no, nah, bro, bro. But now it's like, nah, like, the fuck? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like occasionally I'll make, like, a political satire song, but I never end up releasing that shit. That's just, like, me having fun trying to, like, you know, talk about, like, you know, Illuminati meetings and shit. But when I actually drop this shit that I want to drop, it's usually, like, shit that I, 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 want, I hope people say, and they're like, oh, I understand. Now, I kind of understand, like, who I'm listening to, and I can, you know, take that and be like, oh, I'm going to bring that with me. Like, I, I'm just trying to say, like, people people become too fucking thought out, like, about how they want to start shit. And that's why I always tell people, it's like, you know, it's not about, like, really getting started with your shit. It's, like, about handling what you've already started. Like, get past the first couple songs you got to record. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the first couple of songs I recorded, like, no. Like, nobody's going to hear them. No. Like, I don't want anyone to hear them. You know what I mean? Oh, damn, you're getting a fat rip right now. Jesus. Yeah, bro. But, yeah, like, you don't want no one hearing the first song you, you made. Oh, yeah, no. The first shit I made was pretty bad, man. It, it's, it's, music is a definitely a rabbit hole. <clears throat> and the... The further you go, like the bigger, like it keeps expanding. Like you could, man, music is one of those that you could fall forever because there's so much like different shit you could get good at or like focus on. Or you could be really good at songwriting. You could be really good at sampling or you could be really good at beat making, you know. And then like me, I just try to tie it all together, you know, I try to be like good at, you know, at least the kind of good at every aspect of making music but like i said that shit you could fucking get lost like for years just like you could pick up the guitar just play the guitar for 10 years and get really fucking good at that that's what i wanted to do like back in like 2010 before i ever made a beat like i just wanted to play guitar just want to play guitar in a band and write songs but that shit didn't work out like that was like a heartbreaker for me because you know you're in high school you got a band and shit you're all yeah. like writing songs and stuff you know that's like you're in the grassy or something or yeah. tv show but you know trying to get four people four or five people together in a room and all agree on something and then all be in the same you know uh realm all the time and not fight <laughs> and shit like that is impossible like, i would like yeah. never I would never want to be in a band and they're like I, it's a like system of down like they don't even want to put out an album because of the money issues they have so like I'm glad that like I took the producer solo artist route because being in a band is a fucking mess bro. well you contain and possess automation now like you're very mm -hmm. uh you know you 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 kind of like you're the driver but you're also the passenger you know what I mean like, that's what people got to understand is you got to understand uh, people that make music. They got to, you know, understand how they can stop the necessity to be reliable on a lot of people. Because when you're reliable on so many people, it's just, you know, it's going to delay everything. Plus, you're probably not going to make as much money, first off. Plus, you're not going to have any power to really put things out the way you want to put things out. You know, it's only until, uh, you know you put trust in someone and they can really do something great for you like actually something very significant that's when you want to do that shit but when the beginning stages or even like you know if you just want to make stuff the way you want to make them you gotta be automated you can't you gotta do most of it by yourself like like look at the um, management team like behind Puya. he didn't like get any of that shit until like like more than five years into it and he, like, had to deny a couple other people, like, you know, the opportunity to manage him and use him because he didn't want to be taken advantage of, you know. So, like, start off, be your own manager. Like, would you say that you're your own manager for now? Definitely, yeah. I self-release everything. I do all the cover art. I direct the video. I don't do a lot of video work anymore because it's, it's so expensive just to hire somebody to, like, hold a camera. So I've been learning to fly a drone. <laughs> So yeah, I'm yeah. Like try to, I'm gonna try to, you know, try to see if I can automate my drones, so I could like just shoot my own music videos because it, it's like, 
to get a, a, a photographer from Miami or a videographer from Miami, it's easily, you know, 500 up, a grand up. And I don't have that kind of money just to put into a video. And then I still got to pay to get it edited and color corrected and everything. Everything right. That's why Nem was real smart. Nem was real smart for like doing all that, yeah. doing learning how to do music videos and doing that for other people. Like mm-hmm. that shit. That shit. Like that shit inspired yeah. me, man. I already dropped like I made like four or five music videos, and 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 like half of them have been on my phone. Like you don't need to like all this equipment. You know what I'm saying? You just need yeah, to yeah, know how to yeah. edit cool shit, and also the song has to be good. Like, you know, that's really all it has to be. Good song and flashy editing, in my opinion. You know, eventually, you know, you can hire actors and have skits and get on that Freddie yeah. Gibbs shame type shit. But for now, just make sure that you got to get a visual of your song. Like, like for, for any artist up and coming, I'm talking about. Yeah, you just got to get a decent camera, at least 4K. Like, I made sure the drone I got was 4K. And, like, I've been learning to fly that shit. Once you get some aerial shots, man, that shit... I told Nam, bro, you're goaded. Whenever you need aerial shots, hit me up. He told me he, he's probably coming. He's coming to Fort Lauderdale this year. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, yeah, I told him if you ever need some aerial shot out, you know, I'll hook him up. But, yeah, I got, like, a little DSLR, like a Canon. So that's pretty much, yeah, iPhone or a DSLR. That's pretty much all you need and, like, a good backdrop you know the beach or some shit and that's you know like and then some decent editing if you can go on fiverr and find somebody to like edit your your video decently like it's gonna look good you know then like you said the song gotta be fire yeah like you gotta think like what is the first song i want people to hear for people that have never heard my music before that's what you should think when you're making a music video Like, as an artist, like, anybody who's listening that's a music artist on the podcast, you know, if you're making a music video, you gotta think, like, oh, what's the one that I want people to hear if they've never heard me before? Because most of the time, people who watch music videos, that's the first thing they're gonna look at. Because they're not gonna wanna look at a a screen that's still the whole time if they wanna first check you out. They're gonna wanna see something that's, you know, is motion, is moving. You feel me? Yeah. Do you know uh do you know an artist called Trapland Pat? No. So basically, I don't know if you ever watch uh I don't know if you know like watch Adam Sandler movies, but like uh there's a Adam Sandler movie called Mr. Deeds and Buddy's like in jail, he got the crazy eyes and shit like that. But basically this guy Trapland Pat, they had like a like a thumbnail of the video that he put out. And he didn't think anything of it. Like he shot the video in an hour. He paid the for ta- the videographer. They shot the video right in front of his house. He didn't think anything of it. He thought it was just gonna be another single. And that actually ended up blowing up because of the thumbnail. Like his eyes were like wide as fuck. And then he got like the Kodak black, you know, the, the big bunks, <laughs> the big, yeah. like, you know, the wicks, whatever they call it. I don't know the differences, bunks, wicks, same shit to me. But yeah, that shit ended up blowing up because every time you see his eyes and like the way his golds look and shit, you just you, like it just makes you want to click on the video before you even heard it or like you know anything. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, the, the visual is like very important, and like yeah, for lack of a better term, like not really having a team. That's like where like I'm slacking. Like then moved back to Brazil, so like we worked on like a little video for one of my singles, but ended up not really getting finished but you know not a lot of people to work with out here bro so that's like like even in that song like you know he's talking about like how there's like crabs and like you know in the shadow land you know like basically kind of like fuck Broward in a sense because there is like a lot of crabs out here in a sense where it's like nobody's gonna work with you unless you pay them you feel me like not a lot of people are looking out that's why Nim is like one of those people I like because I could like do a beat for him. He he's like, yo, sample this for me, send it back, cool, got you. And like that's all love, you know what I mean? But you go anywhere else, man, people are charging out the ass for studio time. And it's really hard to like get a team going out here because everybody's out for themselves. And I get it, you know, everyone is 
they're self-made their business they're trying to make money they're trying to make a living but at a certain point you got to commit and you know get together and like you know exchange services so that way everyone can come up but not a lot of people trying to do that out here yeah motherfuckers will be like oh this one guy like i've been like i I was like yo like uh like i was trying to reach out to him as a friend but like he you know he does music too uh he happens to do music too and I was like, I was trying to reach out to him as a friend just to see how he's been because I haven't talked to him in a while. And he's like, I'm gonna have to start charging for phone calls. What? And I'm just like, bro, what the fuck is you talking about? Like, on, he's say like on some music consulting shit, and I'm like, bro, like I don't, own. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just trying to see how you are as a friend. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I, motherfuckers are like a lawyer, yeah. But nah, but nah, nah, but. but So, what's your favorite genre of music to make? Right now, I just like making beats. Man, I like making hip hop. You know, mix it in with like pretty much anything: eighties indie rock, like Big Red Hot Chili Peppers fans. So, like, I like a lot of different shit. But that's why I like hip hop. It's like, I feel like it's a chameleon genre. You know, you can add anything to it. You could do jazz. You could do anything. That's the truth. Anything. Yeah, anything, any, any kind of genre you want to do. Like, I'm Brazilian, so, you know, love samba music and shoru, which is kind of like blues, but like samba style. You feel me? So shit like that. Like, I'll sample anything, literally anything. But definitely I like making beats. I like drums, 808s and stuff like that. Um, but, well, you heard me. I was like in a band before, so I like programming, like, live drums like to sound as live as they can and yeah you know do do guitars and stuff too but for the most part i try to focus on like kind of like a modern psychedelic you know kind of like you know kick cutty type shit post malone you know tyler the creator is big for me too but yeah why do you dub yourself the rip rick rubin of the underground just because uh, I just have the vision. <laughs> That's just like uh, when you think of what a producer is, you know, like like a lot of people clown DJ Khaled and say, oh, what does he do? He doesn't make beats and shit like that. But they don't know that like Rick Rubin is like one of the most talented producers, quote unquote. And he doesn't know a lick of music. He doesn't play any instruments. I don't think he doesn't work on any digital audio workstations you know fl studio or pro tools he doesn't like do any of the actual mixing like he just literally sits there and listens to your shit and says hey do it this way hey no let's try it this way and let's try it 50 different ways even though we're probably gonna go with the first way you know so that's called vision you know and you can't teach that so when he started def jam with uh, russell simmons and you know, he put on LL Cool J and, you know, I think he was one of the first people to kind of like make a beat on a beat machine and like have a rapper rap on it or some shit. It's like my, my memory is kind of bad on that shit, but definitely like I just resonate with that, the vision and having like the the know-how and saying like, like I know a lot of people who make sick beats, but they never like take it to the next level and make a song, you know, they never like... Um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Champ Flay put me on to what you mean. Yeah. Like, he, he was from Raider Clan. He said, DJ Khaled, like, he tries to make music that, like, other people don't. Like, he tries to make different type of music. And when he ran a radio station, he played that different shit. Like, he, he tried to, like, play shit that nobody else would really think of. It's funny that he beefs with Tyler the Creator, you know, because Tyler the Creator is cleaning up. And... That guy just has a cult following. It's crazy, you know, that you could be a rapper and sell so much live shows like that right now. It's, it's pretty amazing. But, yeah, I still have respect for, like, DJ Khaled. And that's why, like, I, a lot of people don't even know who Rick Rubin is. But, you know, he he he's produced all your favorite, you know, rock bands, System of a Down, Red Hot Chili Peppers, BT Boys. Like the list is wide, you know, of 
who he's worked with and you know he's like right up there he's like in Def Jam so like obviously he he knows what he's doing he, he I don't know but that's who I like I just kind of like try to model my shit after in a sense where like I'm trying to like make the best shit possible like I don't know if you watched the Kanye documentary yeah you know like so like that should have set a fire in every producer and just like like same thing with Pharrell. I saw a video the other day on a TikTok saying like, you know, make music every day because you never know what could be out there that you could like pull in. Um, but yeah, it's just like having the vision. That's why like I resonate with saying the underground Rick Rubin because like nobody knows me. <laughs> like I have no following. Like I'm terrible at marketing and social media and shit. Like I, I just started getting good at, at making music. Like I feel like Nem kind of just recently gave me the approval because all the beats I sent him before were trash. <laughs> he like, like I would send him stuff. He was like, yeah, it's all right, but you, you know, keep keep going, keep going, right? So that was the, like the cool part is that he like he he motivated me. Um, but yeah, all this all the shit I sent him before is horrible. So I just started getting good at music. So. The marketing, I'm going to have to put music down for a bit after I release this next tape and like focus on my merch a little bit, put out some good videos and then really go in on how to like market this shit or find some people that know how to do it and are willing to help me out. But, you know, that's the next goal. Well, I'm excited to see what, you know, shit you'll have out and, and what new plans you have executed when we do another episode because i want to have you back on the show in a couple months and i really enjoyed this episode and what we were able to go you know over i feel like you know you 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 know you're very like you know early in like your music you know career it seems but you still like have the enthusiasm of people that i've interviewed that have been doing it for a long time if that makes Mm. sense yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've been doing it for a long time, but I have not at all. And it's yeah. like I'm just just starting to really like find my my sound, my sound, and my and my brand and shit like that. But yeah, man, good looks, bro. Like man, I like I like the show. I'm gonna check out some of the other podcasts. Send me some links. Check out the Viper one. He talks about like how uh, okay. he talks about how like the vaccine is like the mark of the beast. It's like completely schizo filled it's awesome but yeah and, and i love um, like i interview some crazy motherfuckers but like i love sometimes when i interview just like normal people that try to talk about music like like you like you know what i'm saying but sometimes motherfuckers get, get on get into it yeah but i like I, i'm really focused on the music we can get into it i'll but take some, mushrooms and yeah shit, yeah you know? like, i'll be into that i've seen a mantis on a trip once you know it's crazy sometimes motherfuckers <laughs> like i was smoking fucking wet today and Sherm, and it's like, all right, all right, yeah, like, cool, bro. Like, yeah. you've been in and out of rehab six times. Okay, all right, bro. All right, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's cool, it's cool. But, but I'm gonna definitely be hitting you up about, like, you know, that maybe we'll work on music. Like, who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll have a lot more to talk about in the next episode. And yeah, thanks for coming for sure. on the show. Link in the description. Looks, I'll put bro. that link tree, bro. I'll, uh, if you, I'll put that in the description. Good looks, man. Thank you, man. Peace out. All right, homie.